I think it's time America started moving again. It was the first televised presidential debate in United States history. John F. Kennedy took on Richard Nixon. And for the 70 million in 1960 who tuned in, Kennedy's on-screen charisma was a game changer. And which party do we want to lead the United States? Kennedy went on to win that election, and television became the new breakthrough technology of the year. Fast forward to the 2008 presidential election. Television was still big, but the Internet became a major player. From candidates using YouTube to extend the reach of their ads to hosting debates where voters ask questions directly to candidates. I want to know why you think. So the question is, what will be the disruptive technology in this election cycle? Really, the killer app of the 2012 campaign is data. Sam Graham Felsen was the chief blogger behind President Obama's 2008 campaign. This year, Felsen says candidates who can figure out the best way to use data to target voters will have an edge. The Obama campaign in 08 built an email list of over 13 million people. Um, that email list is definitely still that high, if not significantly higher. They've also got uh, around 25 million on Facebook. Another, you know, 10 million, I believe, on Twitter, right? That is a massive amount of data to play with. And candidates are calling on the tech community to help sort through all that data. 2012, there's a huge opportunity to take things like Facebook data or offline donation data or the donation data of actions you take on the, on the website putting that all together into one cohesive system and then running experiments and optimizing across that. Dan Soroker was a product manager for Google's web browser Chrome. He left Google during the 2008 election to help build a personalization technology for the Obama campaign. So if you typed BarackObama.com into your browser, you might see something different than your mother might see or your friend down the street. And depending on how you responded to the different messages, we actually were able to track what worked and what didn't work. And through small refinements over time, we're able to make a big difference in terms of volunteers, in terms of donations, and eventually, hopefully, in terms of votes. Soroker says those tests translated into an extra $75 million in donations and a commitment to invest in technology in the upcoming election. That success also led Soroker to commercialize that technology built during the campaign and bring it to the masses. In 2008, I think Barack Obama had a disproportionate advantage because it happened to be that the people who were supporting the campaign were young, tech-savvy. But the technology gap is closing as the 2012 election approaches. Soroker's latest client? Mitt Romney. The likely Republican presidential nominee's campaign has been using the service since February. It's one of many startups the campaign is testing out. I think the, every campaign has the same opportunity that the Obama campaign had in 2008 to use that data to help them be more effective. And in a presidential campaign projected to break all previous spending records, the cost of ignoring this latest trend may be the election. For CNN Money, I'm Lori Siegel. I'm counting on Ohio.